Bud shows up with the equalizer down. Jojo taking a lot of damage. XU with the kill credit. Isles and Rich are here as well. Paranoia used. We're not. Push, push. I got it. No, I'm gonna just come here. I got it. Yeah, I got it. Yeah. Right, 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 right Taking on the upstarts. Contra, the double, he doesn't have flash anymore. This is a huge pick for 100 Thieves. Look at the back line. Contracts is getting in. Dope, but still alive. And 100 Thieves have been routed. Work for it. But NRG are walking away with the win. Quite the exciting one, and they want some more kills. Two, three. Bam. Kill it, bro. Are, kill it. Kill it. You guys are noobs. <laughs> you guys are noobs. Dude, yeah. where's my Jin inting with us? Get two three on that guy. Oh, thank you. Uh, we are coming to you, Bupo. Can we walk up mid or not? Yeah. They have a... I'm trolling, sorry. Uh, they have no flash. Hit fire gets the kill on up the end back around the ball. The health bar were dicey, but it's FlyQuest coming out on top. It's a 7-3 game, and Baron is in their sights. Baron down to 2,000 HP and claimed by FlyQuest. Your lungs are amazing. Jets counter. More. Yeah. Oh, I got bubble. <clears throat> guys are panicking a bit too much. Yeah, I mean, we are so... We can win this one, right? Yeah, come, yeah, come, we come, can come, 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 come. I don't vision. Uh, can I one, one, John. Go, 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 go. Watch, watch, various damage, watch various damage. Slowly, 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 cast. Okay, okay. Okay. First, fair, 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 fair. Doctor. Okay. Yeah, yeah, oh, nice. There goes his homework. There goes Zazel. As Boogie's gonna be your next target. Into the back goes Armeo. The Zonias you were talking about. Insanity cannot escape the triple kill back of a tactical. Make it a quadra. One, two, three, four. Everybody give Jin more. And Immortals having an absolute dunk <laughs> on Shopify. That was yesterday. This is today. Welcome to the LCS waiting room. We got Rafa. Woo! I just like In that the squad slow with part. us. Just the. We had no idea it was going on stage, by the way. <laughs> so when you came to me and Tactical, we were both just like, I have no idea what happened up there. <laughs> Rafa, your dunk is amazing. <laughs> What's going to be your post casting gag? Yeah. I feel like you need to have one now. True. Mm -hmm. yeah. Me and Azalem definitely need to cook something up. That's a later problem. Uh, Kern Rafa is not dealing with that problem right now. Yeah. All right, Kern Rafa, let's see what problem you're dealing with right now. Well, right now, well... Mm. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's a lot of Tell things. more. <laughs> <laughs> Please. Uh, Kern Rafa is trying to deal with the bingo card that I just inherited from Kangas. Yeah, we'll that is that unfortunate. <laughs> we'll get to it, I'm sure. We'll get to it, I'm sure. Yeah, we will. Immortals won yesterday. Yeah, they that did. was Which huge. I knew they wouldn't go winless. Let's go! Somebody in our meeting this week was like, Immortals is going to go own yeah. 14. I said, there's no shot. Yeah, no shot. Yeah. That's now, that crazy. isn't me saying they were going to beat Shopify Rebellion, but yeah. it was me saying that they were going to beat someone sometime. Yeah. Guys, what do you think? Yeah, I think the it was going to happen just because they had really talented players. We've sung the praises of Tactical and Mass coming into the team. I thought this uh, game was excellent because from the IMT standpoint, they actually had a really coherent poke draft uh, and pick. I thought Tactical had a really good game, but they also played around Mask, and it was just an exceptional play from him individually. I just want to give a big shout out to Armeo. I mean, this. The Lilia yeah. pick is something yeah. that both me and Emily have been super kind of big on. It's like, why are more pros not playing this really? right now? Especially since more pros are still kind of going back to things like Maokai and other melee skirmishers that can really be punished by a Lilia. Yeah. And with the map changes, I expected ganking was going to be less efficient on Season 14. And then that gives kind of a pass to Lilia to be like, well, I don't really need to protect my lanes as much. As long as everyone is chilling, I can just power farm. And then you hit that first item, Leandris, you're better at skirmishing than melee champions. And then once you get two items, you're kind of like God on the rift at that point. Yeah, I think the big setup was because as we were going through draft, we were like, where is everything going? going? But we yes. were thinking about um, insanity. Yeah, Not. we were thinking insanity, but then also the flex of the Maokai into the support position. Because obviously, again, any 
poke composition is going to be a risk to a point just because you have to play it out well enough to protect your mobile carries a lot of the time. Um, but the way they set up for fights for tactical to just be able to fire from the back line was really, really good. And he had so much setup and CC uh, for a lot of these fights for both him and then obviously Masks Jace coming over and doing a ton of damage. Yeah, they, they look good. We can talk about Mask Jace now. Yeah. Uh, because you despite putting Immortals 8th in your power rankings. Look. I've said, hey, I think Mask is good. <laughs> yes! So there are other problems, yesterday. but I thought <laughs> I mean, Mask was great. On the spot, we all put Immortals 8th. Yeah, yes, that's what I was going to say. So we'll get to that. Let's talk about Mask's Jace in particular, because he has a 82% win rate on his second most played. Even hearing from Tactical, he was talking up uh, how good his Jace build was, or Jace was individually. Mm -hmm. But I wanted to talk about his build in particular, because he actually went towards Hubris earlier. Usually, you don't go Hubris within the Jace build, but uh, he was already winning his lane. They already had good skirmishes within this game. It's a snowballing item just based off of, of course, if you get a, a kill within, um, or at least if you damage him within three seconds of a kill, then of course you are gonna get 15 uh, AD plus any additional based on the statue. So like Hubris as an item is a, a, a peculiar item mm. that is based on how well you are doing within the game. And shows yeah. a lot of confidence to build it on stage. Exactly, yeah. and there was always a question on Cyril as, as an item because Cyril does grudge as an item did get nerfed. Yeah. So for Jace players, for anyone, and Ezreal as well, yep. for anyone that's building him, you oftentimes are looking for other options. Now he kicked it to fourth item just so he can pick Hubris in that. So he was dealing a lot of damage within this game and I was focused on his build because he's usually pretty thoughtful on Jace builds in general. There was one game that he was actually playing in EU Masters uh, last year when he went Eclipse when everyone was going uh, a different mythic entirely. It was mm -hmm. uh, Duskblade just because of how good Duskblade was, but he yeah. didn't, it was unapproachable in that game just because of how many tanks and like he was never going to go melee range in, in that specific game. So with that game, I realized, okay, he's really particular about the build, how he ends up playing it. Really good uh, Jace game. And I don't think he's going to be able to get it going forward with just, if there is a target ban available, that's the target ban you go to. Yeah, Immortals look good. I, 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 wanna, I wanna have a little fun here. Let's do it. Okay. I've seen the numbers. Uh-huh. The beginning of waiting room. He's done the math. While LEC is happening. Yeah. Not highly viewed. True. Mm -hmm. So the people that are listening to us right now. You're the real one. You're awesome. <laughs> like you are true hardcore LCS fans. So it is fine that we continue this Immortals discussion because. Okay. <laughs> everyone put them eighth. So yeah. normally True. you don't talk about them much. Are you willing to bump them up based on what you've seen in the first three games? Yes. How high? Oh. Set your over and under for how high Immortals will climb. Two ranks up. Because okay. uh, at the that's, time. That, that's playoffs. Yes. Yeah. So the two teams that are above that for me was Dignitas. And even on that day when I had made that decision, I was like already struggling between Dignitas and IMT. Yeah. So even immediately that. And the other team that I'd bump them up of is 100 Thieves. So like that would be where I'd place them right now. Anyone else? Gonna give Immortals a playoff nut after one win? Okay! Uh, it's it's, it's so can. difficult because I think the reality of bumping Immortals up while you're also looking at uh, 100 Thieves and Dignitas, who I kind of put yeah. in the bottom three as well, they're not doing bad against the top teams they're playing. Yeah, Obviously, I think Snyder's been looking good. Yeah, like yeah. One, one, two in both of their records, both Dignitas and 100 Thieves had some convincing moments in their games against Cloud9 and Energy, respectively. And those were the, yeah. the top two dogs that we were looking at the beginning of the split. I'm going to yeah. say no because I'm not overreacting to anything. That's crazy. I, that's going to be I'm a just theme just in my very That's crazy. Stubborn. <laughs> yeah, I'm very stubborn in terms of, like, if I'm wrong, like I was about C9 last year. You're I just going to keep... Like, what, third or something? Yeah, Probably it was, it was yeah, seconds. it was still high, but like not at the top. Like yeah. I own my L's, I, so, I will stand by that. So like if Immortals respect. prove me wrong, put it here. If yeah. Immortals prove me wrong, that'll be a really cool, cool story. Raz is That's hedging your me. bet right there where it's like, I think differently, but I'm not gonna place them I differently. I didn't say I thought differently. <laughs> okay, I just okay. said I don't That's, change my mind. So yeah. you just don't think that they're gonna yeah. bump uh, up. So I will say looking at the overall like breadth of games for 100 Thieves and Dignitas specifically, which actually makes today's first matchup super interesting to mm. me because mm -hmm. they're facing off against each other. I think both teams have had like flashes of some really, really interesting, like good gameplay and then flashes of not, mm -hmm. not great gameplay. So um, I think across the board, if you take in all of like their entire performance, I still think those two teams are, are better. One thing that I like about IMT, even in their losses, at least it seems like they're going towards like a pretty clear identity of how they're playing their games. Yeah. Um, that, I mean, they already built their team with an identity of play towards bot lane and mid, yeah. like mm -hmm. whenever possible. And I think it makes it easier for Castle to understand his role. Also, they're like, if they understand what their best comps are, 
that's a plus. Um, something that I think that they have been doing even in their losses that their laning phase, both mid and bot lane, has been good. We, well, meanwhile, mm. the games that we've been seeing from 100 Thieves, even in their losses, it has been River kind of pushing them over the line. Quid has been a positive, and I think Quid should be focused on a little bit more, just because I think right now he's been over attributed to River. But that being said, bot lane has been a struggle sometimes. Top lane, outside of his Cassante game, Sniper's had a great Cassante game, but outside yeah. of that has been a struggle. So I think individual laning phase needs to be looked at for 100 Thieves. Whereas for IMT, their overall team play was an issue, and has, it looks like it's being resolved. I want to like... I'm going to go back and chat and check if people enjoy Immortals discussions, because if they do, we can yeah. start leading <laughs> with an Immortals check-in just to see how they've been doing. I, I like my boy Tactical. I want to see our Mayo succeed. Right. So we'll see. We'll see. Yeah, anyway, we'll see. there were some meta updates as well. Uh, we were on the live patch yesterday. We got to see Karma Ezra. We didn't see Karma mid lane, but that's also because it was banned in every game except this one when it was first picked and then put bot. What do you think? Yeah, uh, I was kind of surprised that we saw the Lucian after the Karma's picked. I mean, Karma Ezreal, well, we'll see in this play. Karma, I mean, Young gets caught and takes a current shot as well. But um, I think the big thing with Karma Ezreal in lane is that they should just have a lot of control over the push in that lane. You can transform that into Drake control. Inspired had so many choices in terms of where he could go earlier in this game. And then, I mean, they also had Ocean Drake. It took so long for uh, TL to kill anyone. <laughs> Anyone, yeah. but specifically the Mordekaiser, like even mid game, Whippo was just soaking up so much damage. And when that happens, if it happens on the opposite side of the map, it allows you to do something else. And then for the Karma Ezreal specifically, when it happens in a team fight, they're just constant damage. And Karma does, even with a support support build, I say, because Busio did end up throwing a few damage items in there, um, as, as he should. Like you do a surprising constant amount of damage yeah. in those fights. Yeah. Kind of felt sad that we didn't really see, get to see the true strength of Karma because, yeah, it was just ended up being Karma support that we already saw last week, right? Mm -hmm. But the fact that it, I think the draft was the focus mm -hmm. because the fact that Team Liquid was willing to give it to FlyQuest when it was a three pick flex between yeah. top lane, mid, and support, I thought was not a great idea. So, like, from that perspective, it's really, um, it, it gives you a bit of a stranglehold on the draft and you can decide yeah. to go into any pick that you want, which benefited uh, FlyQuest because they ended up, A, giving the Orianna mid, mm -hmm. but the biggest one was the Mordek Mordekaiser top yeah. lane into the Cassante. That was the big win in the draft that really helped out Whippo. So I think from the draft perspective, we got to see it there. We did. But we actually want to see a Karma mid yeah. and top, <laughs> specifically Karma mid. But if that gets banned throughout the rest of the day, I wouldn't be surprised. And honestly, that still helps with 100% presence rate. That's going to be great for my bingo chart. Oh, it's two. Well, really quick before we get to bingo. Okay. When are we going to see a Lucian win? Rafa? Oof. Rafa, do you think we're going to see a Lucian win? Mm, I don't know if it's happening this was today. Yesterday. I mean, like... This, Weirdly this... enough, the same game. Yeah. So, and... like, can you really call him bad if he had to play against Karma? <laughs> no. I, I mean, maybe if it was just, like, a one-time thing, but Lucian is still winless in the LCS, and I'm yes, pretty sure it, yes. it still hasn't gotten that many wins in LEC either. So, I... For me, Lucian is just this pick. Anytime I see it in champs queue or I see it in solo queue, it's just yeah. like berserk. It goes crazy and you just get so many kills and then the game is over because usually the enemy team is like, all right, Lucian's like five kills. I, I, I want to go next, right? Okay. But I think there's a, usually a lot more patience in, you know, uh, stage games and yeah, there's a lot slow. less variables that are like volatile and I think just Lucian relies on the volatility to be exploded mm. and confidently taken on more and I think most of the time in LCS, that doesn't happen. Yeah, I mean, I think, so with a Lucian lane, A, you don't really want to lose push, as we already covered, the Karma Ezreal into the Lucian Nami lane is a good, like, a good response because he's not going to be able to get the push, they're not going to be able to have bot side control, and it does somewhat, unless you're focusing bot side, kind of remove the kill pressure that they have as well, which is another really important part about Lucian lanes. The idea is that you're taking control of the bot side of the map around your Lucian. So I think it's not just that teams are going to play slower. They're not going to be as aggressive. I think that's part of it. But I also think the other part is that you have to play around it as a team and understand 
we get this lane ahead, yeah. we kill our bot lane opponents, we yeah. have push, we get, we start early Drake stacking, we have control over the bot side, which means we can leverage that against the top side and when we take grubs and when we contest grubs and all that kind of stuff. And then you spread that influence in the mid game where you're just sending Lucian to kind of chew through turrets, have lane prio, be able to explode people. And we haven't seen that kind of execution out of any LCS team. Yeah, and I think that's the, the, the kicker. I feel like when, whenever you talk to an analyst or a coach or just any fan, their thought process on Lucian changes based off of who's operating the pick. Yep. That's really all it is, right? Mm -hmm. So if you're looking at uh, Gumayushi or if you're looking at a Jackie Love, you're like, slam the Lucian pick, Let's I go. have full faith. Or if you're looking at a Berserker, sl I completely agree. If Berserker picks Lucian one time, it's going to be resolved. The one win. <laughs> that's the one win. Yeah. So it, it is about the team that's able to operate on the pick, as you were mentioning, but also the room of error is there. The clip that we just showed two times is literally yeah. just one mistake that actually Jan and Core JJ was starting to get like positive trades within the mm -hmm. lane. And then all it took was that one mistake where it's like, okay, now it fell and they're getting outscaled. Uh, so it really does depend. And I like the Lucian pick. I like Lucian Melio, Lucian Nami. It just really needs to be um, in the right circumstances, yeah. and a team needs to learn from it going into the next day. And you can't be afraid to take your chances either. I think, like, even though it didn't win, there's multiple times when, like, Wild Turtle last week on mm. Shopify Rebellion had really good Lucian moments. So it's like, you can't be afraid. You just have to, like, as soon as you see mm -hmm. a, a moment, you just immediately go in, open up with Coling, and try to maximize your damage output. Yeah, did anyone have Lucian on their bingo card yesterday? Someone must have. I think I had a Lucian yeah. one on my bingo card. Let's check, let's check Emily's yeah, card Yeah, I definitely do, had Lucian in my bingo card. We can do a little, can do a little bingo check-in because uh, our production team oh. forgets nothing. So they were tracking it yesterday. Me. Emily, head up to the Telestrator and tell us, uh, well, it's looking like that one line on the top That's yeah, not is <laughs> rather likely to complete. This is my only shot, I think, is this one, right? So I think this is my only so shot yeah, that to was, get bingo. What color is that? It doesn't show up on my screen at all. Oh, well. We don't have just point at it. Just point at it. So like, I think, I think this one I might be able to get. There we and go. This one I might be able to get. I think so. Um, a lot of these I kind of like, inted myself. I this also is a, is a sticker that should be filled out. Oh yeah, Rift Herald. C9, C9 did get that. Six scrubs. Six oh, yeah. scrubs and Herald. Yeah. Well, it's not leading um, anywhere, anyways. Yeah. So it's not be a line. <laughs> I don't know. What? We also tried this. There's no driving. And then Darius pick. Chat. Yeah, we're gonna go through the three bingo cards. So um, please tell us who you think is gonna end up yeah, actually getting bingo. I, I think the continue. big thing, the big thing that didn't happen yesterday that I'm happy about, even though. Oh, I that didn't line get it. is really close. This one. Corky's here in MF. Yeah. Uh, I don't think anyone's gonna play MF though, even though Eddie. I think she's strong. Tactical could. That's true. He, he's definitely. Tactical is an MF enjoyer. Too. Anyway, I still think this is my, maybe like. Berserker, like maybe Berserker, you know? True. Uh, I don't even know if that shows up. Yeah. And then, and then FBI, maybe, you know? I like it. Like, True. All so right. we've actually even that, identified that's it. My, yeah, that's Raz, my closest. go next. Let's check in on your card. All right, let's hop in on this one. Thank you. Let's see what we got here. Sadly, I was struggling, but <laughs> not really, because some of mine require- Well, also, you get to make your own bingo card. So like, yeah. just because you made a more difficult to acquire bingo doesn't mean it's bad. True. And also, I, I require the full weekend to finish for 100% yeah, common win rate. And so, that another two so this is my biggest chance, because I think this is very likely. Oh, I think yeah. this is very possible. Yep. Yeah. Stats team, if you got me on that one. And the one, tenacity rune stat is the stat shard, yeah. yes. not the yes. yellow rune. So the shard, that's why I said the rune stat, but it's fair. And then, this is the one that I'm hoping for. If I get this one. <laughs> you love those picks. Especially Corky. I hope yeah. they're Who doesn't love Corky? I hope they're booing you out in Corky the arena here. now. Corky they booed you before. Corky, Corky, Corky. Oh my God. So that one's gonna happen. If anyone was watching LEC today, 50 minute games. Uh, was close. Yeah. Their game one was like 49 or yeah, something. Yeah, it was like 49 minutes. So I think if we pick a way game, guys, yeah. that's very possible too. We already got the <laughs> Yeah, Raz. <laughs> Thanks, Raz. <laughs> Thank you, I appreciate it. Um, so like all of these are possible. My favorite one personally is the Casted him because of Showmaker. Just yeah. generally speaking, I've always heard from players the moment you have your draft completely lined up and then an LCK ge game happens, one of your Korean players, even just anyone that just watches the game is like, guys, I know we have a solid <laughs> draft strategy. Let's change everything because this guy had a pentakill on I a cast. You know, right. yeah. One of the craziest coincidences is both Raz and Emily have a Senna top left without coordinating at all. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. That is kind of weird. Okay, Rafa, you get to be honorary Kangas because you're just going to win this card. I'm so sorry that you've oh, been you've been, you've things, been cooking. This is now your card. Yeah, I changed some stuff. Okay. <laughs> so, 
Now my <laughs> Hey, I didn't know you had problems with this mic. All right, well, I can't hear anything anymore, so we're just going to assume. It's fine. It's just music playing. Okay, True. Cool, cool, cool. Unless we uh, vibe with it. Yeah, so I just want to point out this one. Kangas had someone hovers smolder, and I'm like, bro, that's not even enabled yet. Like, it's not even out on live until next Wednesday, so I had to change that one. And then this one was no pauses, and that got defeated immediately, so. so you're just allowing it to yeah, be. Yeah, so I, I changed a couple 20 ones. 20 plus KDA, you know what yeah. he is at now? With uh, he's at KDA's 17, now? last okay. time I checked. Wow. You know who right. actually has the highest KDA right now? Fudge, 23. Ooh. Ooh. Okay, and from one game. Uh, no, it's the average KDA. Oh, it's the K yeah. they end wow. their season KDA at the end of the week, not their weekly KDA. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. well, that middle line seems shockingly close. Yeah. yeah, and they're going up against Shopify Rebellion, which I it, it could happen where Joe just gets a bunch of kills, no deaths, and then that's okay. what. So, Rafa. Oh, Rafa. What's up? Did you just change the smolder thing to another one that's just impossible? Bot lane do buys double support items? No, I didn't change it. No, that was Kangas. Oh, you actually think someone's going to yeah. do this? Yeah. I mean, well, this is more probable. Hovers than Nidalee, that. that's why. I didn't want to yeah, cheat yeah. and be like, oh, yeah, someone hovers, I don't know. Karma. Yeah. <laughs> True, fair. So, I, I, and Nidalee's my favorite champion. You know, so Kangas had some really weird, like, the the Ari 100%. Yeah, I, I don't know where the this Shen, came from. Shen like, Wingry. what? I don't yeah, know what's Kangas Shen been cooking. Red. I'm a big fan of flaming Kangas here. I think we should <laughs> continue like, to do yeah, it. Yeah, I will say the Shen and Camille 100% win rate is really not that. Like, if you're gonna put an, a champion 100% win rate, it may as well be a champion that's not that common. True. Because then Wait, it just takes one. This one, unfortunately, is never gonna be completed because. He oh, had, yeah, he's already wrong. Or picked. Experimental hex play, 100% okay. presence. He's trying to run you down, I think. Yeah. Thanks, Rafa. That was a good Kangas roast. You tried. Thanks for joining <laughs> us yesterday, Kangas. Ha! We love you. Love you. <laughs> Let's take a look at what we have through three games in the LCS so far. Only 14. Also, shout out to someone in chat who mentioned that Immortals winning one game means they've won at least 7% of their games this year. True. Which is true because that's what every game it counts. It counts. Every game counts. So 3-0 on the top, Shopify at 0-3, and a huge clumping of teams at 1-2. and two. That's going to break up today. It's a heartbreak for the Shpot Shpotify. <laughs> Shopify. Don't it's mind me. I'm just yeah. fixing my pack. <laughs> <laughs> Let's look at the schedule. So a lot of games that are quite interesting today. Cloud9 always gets the viewers because they are the best, and we want to see if they continue to be the best. But there's drama in Dig vs. 100. I think the most drama is actually going to be in that game three yes. with Energy versus FlyQuest. And yeah. there's already some beef in this game. Early season, medium rare beef. So <laughs> medium last rare. week, Jensen and Inspired both had strong opinions on Energy's championship run. So let's take a listen. I mean, expectations were obviously that we are going to be a good team. I think every team uh, that I played on was always pretty good and uh, at least a little bit successful. And I think uh, looking at the rosters, I was really confident that we'll make at least top two. I think energy winning was a big fluke because I was not in the league. I don't expect energy to be like winning us yes again. Um, it was a bit of a fluke, I think. Don't clickbait me like that. Uh, Clip it! <laughs> clip it! Well, West clipped it. We didn't even have to clip it. <laughs> they did! Well, they found the perfect picture for that, too. Wow. Yeah, to make it seem completely different <laughs> than the way it was delivered. Yes. We are. So, what do we predict? Doing him dirty. Oh. Let's see. Yeah. Did you. Because I, I, I saw everybody's power rankings. Everybody put energy second. Wait and a you're minute. They're all willing to change oh. after three games? That? After one energy loss? So here, here's- Everyone is saying FlyQuest is now better? Yes, okay. So I think right now, energy are still scaling up, whereas Fly have already, within their game yesterday against Team Liquid, uh, it was something that Emily mentioned that just the overall coordination is going a lot better than I thought it was going to at this point yeah. of the season. Like. Uh, week one was a lot of what I expected, where Inspired and Bwipo have a sure sense of what they want to do in team fights, and then Masu and Busio are like, wait, how do we get from point A to point B? A lot of the, the Seraphine Senna combo, they were like trying to link up with the front line, but Inspired is just like, I'm going for the dragon, and Masu and Busio like, wait, we need someone to yeah. escort us through this choke point here. But then yesterday, team's fighting, a lot more cohesive mm -hmm. and a lot more aware of like, okay, where do I need to be at this point in time?
This may shock you, Jet, but I don't consider my preseason power rankings, and I'm doing useful me. at all. No, uh, <laughs> so I do think FlyQuest, uh, based on again their performance across three games, NRG's performance across three games, mm. I think either team can win. But in terms of what FlyQuest are looking like going into yeah, this matchup, perfect. yeah, it's true. I think poor Yon. Uh, I think that. Uh, <laughs> I think that they are looking more cohesive. I really liked what they did in this draft and also just how they played it out. Like it seemed like this was the game where they entered it. They knew exactly what they had and how they wanted to execute it. Meanwhile, I think yeah. NRG have been playing pretty well. I think they themselves would also say that their mid game in particular has been a little shaky in yeah. terms of making some mistakes there. Um, and that's where I think FlyQuest should be able to take advantage. Yeah, and I actually think if we were just using these three games of data, it would be a pretty obvious prediction to say that FlyQuest has looked better than Energy on stage. Yeah. Uh, for me personally, I will generally predict towards my power rankings for the first half of the split because I know how that much game sense. to game variance there can be. And Energy, for what it's worth, if we're trying to make a positive spin on it, did look good yesterday. They have still only lost one game. The match against 100 Thieves was competitive for a bit, but they did a good job of finding side lane picks over and over again in the late game. And this is where energy thrives is in being able to play as a team and then also having a bit of an, an honestly adjustment period with Huhi instead of Ignar because Huhi is such a big voice. But they are very willing to make plays throughout the entire game. They had a lot of really good engages via alt into Ash Arrows where they were picking out Quid over and over again. And I'm I'm honestly just looking forward to a high quality game and seeing, you know, what kind of what kind of chip energy has been able to develop on their shoulders since they are coming off of an LCS championship yes. and a world's quarterfinals appearance? Yeah, and I think uh, the other thing that you pointed out in Huhi coming to this team is that Huhi, I'm really curious to see the draft for this game specifically because Huhi will throw some some weird stuff in the bot lane sometimes. FBI is a really good Senna player. They they themselves yeah. have played it together a lot. Um, and his ash, ash yesterday was really good. Like, you forget how good he is at, the, at that champion. And then Raz and I are watching, we're like, oh yeah, he is really good at support Ash. Yeah, <laughs> but first game of the day is actually Dig versus Hunter Thieves. So before we get into that, let's see if Dove and Rich can guess the ranks of their own teammates. Ooh. Last time we successfully tricked Jensen and Sensor in it, but this time in order to keep it fresh, we had a different idea. We had Dove and Rich guess the rank of fan submitted plays, but little did they know that they were actually guessing the rank of their teammates. Enjoy. Wait. KT is just what I'm doing. But first, skill play. Let's do it. Rose. Ah. X U? Yeah. <laughs> no way. <laughs> no way. <laughs> 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 wow, don't go far. Don't don't run like this. Please watch the full video. The full context is hilarious because they also show the exact like similar replays. They go through everything, which is like basically the plays of both Tomo and Exu. And when Exu was looking at one of the first replays, I was like, wait, that's that's me. <laughs> that's us. What's this? Why are you showing our replays? And of course, Dub and uh, uh, it, they just did not know. So that was really funny up until the end. Great video. Yeah, uh, first game of the day. Let's pull up their predictions one more time so we can see the whole slate of games. Dignitas versus 100 Thieves. Check out their predictions. Uh, really, a, a lot of differences in our prognostications. Mm -hmm. We need to find a new yeah. word. Rafa, who's headed up to the desk, thank you for joining us at Winning Room, did pick thank Dignitas. You, Rafa. Yeah. A lot of us are drinking the 100 Thieves Kool-Aid because Sniper's had some solo kills on the top lane. And personally, I really like the way they've been drafting. Yeah. What do you think, Emily? Yeah, I like their drafts. I think they're really cohesive for what this team, it, like the players on this team specifically, um, whether it's them talking to Grayson or Golden Glue about what they, they want to do, or it's Golden Glue kind of drafting for them. This They've had surprise surprisingly cohesive drafts. And the other thing I think is that um, I am an XU fan. I have kind of wanted to see him come to the stage. However, I think going up against River, XU is someone who has an idea in his head of like, 
how the early game wants to go. And when that goes wrong, he mm -hmm. can't react as well. Whereas I think River is a lot more flexible and he'll have control over the early game. Yeah, my focus is River too. Actually, the one sure. gank that he had really bot is. lane, or at least the attempt on energy, I thought was really well done. His early game planning was solid. Obviously, it didn't work out because of the hawk shot. But there are a lot of elements in which River is trying his hardest to help the early game for his team. And he's been doing a great job alongside Quid in the mid lane too. So uh, you can't sing enough praises for uh, River in this sense. Yeah, I do agree with you. It takes two to show the improvement. Like, Quid has obviously made some improvements, but the way River engages team fights, like, if they can somehow get to, like, nine wins, yeah. it's going to be a, a, bit of an MV, a bit of an MVP case. But before we head out to the casters for game one, Emily. Emily had a heartfelt message for fans around the globe. with an all-out brawl between Dignitas and 100 Thieves. Next up, Shopify Rebellion will take on the undefeated Cloud9. Afterwards, reigning champs NRG will look to clap back against FlyQuest. And finally, Immortals look to build off their first win against Team Liquid. But heading back over to Dignitas versus 100 Thieves, it's the third LCS game for Sniper. And as usual, all eyes are on him. Even reigning player of the week, Blabber, had this to say about Sniper's debut. Yo, oh, Blabber. Oh, what's up, Jet? Dude, thanks for doing this. Of course. How does it feel to be undefeated? <laughs> I mean, it feels great. <laughs> did you uh, see Sniper's first game? Yes, I did. Do you think the fact that he was so known from like 14 when he hit rank one and there's been this anticipation for whether or not he'd be like the star on the LCS, do you think that's going to make it harder for him to succeed? I know there's a lot of hype around Sniper, um, but he never played that well, like, in Academy from okay. the games I've watched. Yeah. Um, and I think that he's going to need time to grow. I think there's really not that high expectations for his team. Like, no one expects his team to be that insane. Mm. So, anytime 
I would say that he like or they overperform, like be the yeah. top team, right? Like be yeah. like Energy or a FlyQuest or or us or something, right? It's or TL. Be, or TL, yeah. People are gonna be really excited, and I think that uh, he does have pressure for sure yeah. because he's you know such a young kid. Mm-hmm. Eyes are on him as the next NA talent, uh, along with some of the other new rookies. I think this split. Yeah. And there's definitely pressure on him to perform well, but like. I think he's going to be given time by his auric. I think mm-hmm. they have, have a lot of faith in him. Yeah. I like that Hunter are letting him play his cover picks. They're not just putting him on all like in a Warren box. Cassante. Exactly. Yeah. They're letting him pick what he wants. I think that's what really helped me when I first started too. Just Reaper let me play whatever I want. Um, I think they're looking like they're going in the right direction with him. Mm. So I think he'll be able to develop well. Welcome back, y'all. We're getting ready for 100 Thieves taking on Dignitas. And as Blabber said... One of the things I do like about that is the fact that Sniper is getting to play a lot of these comfort picks before we get further into the season. But before the draft begins, my good buddy Azale actually got a chance to speak to both Enatron and Golden Glue ahead of today's game. Let's take a look. Hey everyone, Azale here before 100 Thieves versus Ding Toss with Golden Glue and Enatron, head coaches of the two teams. Right off the rip, uh, what are you guys going to draft today? Give me uh, two truths and a lie. Uh, we're gonna pick Riven. Uh, we're gonna pick Seraphine. Um, we're gonna pick Ziggs. <laughs> wow, uh, we're not this prepared. I think you're more prepared than us today. <laughs> uh, let me see our own tricks. I think we bring back the Laoi for each on top today, so I hope you're ready for it. Laoi's oh. weak dispatch. Oh, weak dispatch. The new walls, the Laoi the Lowe tentacles are too far away, so we're ready for that. Okay, um, so how are you feeling about the, the new patch in general? This is the first week we've been on the live patch. We saw some changes yesterday. Obviously, double support items dead, so that was in there. We saw Karma getting banned a lot, played once. Do you guys think there's other new stuff that's kind of like unexplored so far on this new patch? Twisted Fate. ADTF? I mean, it's Twisted Fate. I will agree too. We haven't seen it yet, so maybe I hope today we see some action of it. Yeah. It'd be pretty cool. So both of you guys have had really tough strength of schedules. You actually both played uh, C9, then Energy. In, I guess it was inverse, but uh, you both have had a really tough strength of schedule. You're both sitting at one and two right now. Uh, how important is it, you know, to get to 50-50, to have this win here today, to kind of like, you know, give you some confidence going forward? Because the reality is the schedule is actually pretty short now. Yeah, I mean, I definitely think for both of us, like we've had, like you said, really tough opponents. So it really feels like if you can go 50-50 on the first two weeks, especially when you have like a new roster that you're trying to build, it's it's a big confidence boost going into the third week. Yeah, similar to him, I think just we faced already kind of the strong teams, right? So I think right now if we want to be high in the standings, one of us needs to go down basically today, right? So the confidence is really important right now. We have also a young roster as well, so yeah. He already played the strong teams. Dang. <laughs> uh, well, it should, be a, it should be a good game between you guys. I'm excited for it. Hopefully, you'll give us some spicy picks. Looking forward to the Alawi. That's going to be it from us. I can't believe Golden Glue just spilled his entire draft secret wow. ahead of today's game. Well, Riven, I'm... Seraphine, Ziggs. Well, that's easy. Dignitas, if you can't prep for that, then I, I don't know what's going to happen next. But good to have you on the casting desk, man. First of all, both of these teams, I think the exciting thing to look about as we continue further and further into the season is that both of these teams obviously have some experienced players, but they both invested into some of their talent that they have built up in their infrastructure, mainly Sniper for 100 Thieves and XU for Dignitas. Yeah, absolutely. You know, there's kind of a good mix of, of veterans as well as some of the newer players, you know, amongst both of these teams. Uh, I think both their mid laners are kind of in a similar spot as far as like building within the LCS. You know, obviously, I think Dove has, has played a lot more competitive than Quid, but still, they're new to the LCS and they have to kind of build their reputation here, establish themselves here, and we're gonna have to see if they're gonna be able to do that. Um, you know, Rich, I think, you know, is kind of on the opposite end of the spectrum where this guy is, has so much experience, he's going up against Sniper, but that's kind of the top lane gauntlet that Sniper is having to run, right? Yeah. Like, he's going up against so many experienced players, uh, they have played against a lot of really tough teams as well. You know, Sniper played against like Impact. Uh, then they played against uh, C9 and NRG. So he's played against Dokla. He's played against Fudge. He's played against Impact. Now he has to play against Rich. Like it is not easy up there. I, it's really the trial of the fire that Sniper has to go through. But if you're gonna live and make a name for yourself in the LCS, you're gonna have to do it at some point and go through the big dogs first. As the draft first phase concludes. Looks like this first pick might be an Ash. Just something to be flexed between both Tomo and Isles. We know that just great 
utility with the global ultimate to make those picks happen in the early and the mid game. Yeah, absolutely. It does feel like mostly we've been seeing Ashes support. You know, there has been some AD, um, but yet more support, you know, thus far in pro play. Uh, it is definitely a flex pick. Is definitely something that is really strong. Although it does feel like it's, it's fallen down in priority a little bit on this patch. People are a little bit less worried about the pick overall. You can see Karma getting banned out as it was banned out almost every game yesterday. Just the one that was left up and it was actually grabbed for support. Um, Nocturne, another mainstay on the ban page. Rumble as well. So a lot of pretty standard stuff. Will be interesting to see where Dig goes next because we do have Varus Casante on the other side. And Varus has been kind of a, a bit of a mixed bag. We've been seeing some lethality. We saw some on hit yeah. yesterday from B-Boy. I thought he performed pretty well individually, but it does feel like a lot of the Varus games, they're struggling to make it work. Unless you have a really good, I think, kind of secondary threat, you know, you have a really high consistent DPS mid laner or something. I feel like Varus isn't really working out most of the time. Yeah, I know it during the preseason when all the pros were on Champs Q, Varus was kind of looked at as the staple bot laner to pick because he uses the lethality items really well, but always has that flexibility to go into on-hit builds. But you're absolutely right that Varus often finds himself in these team fights where he's getting outspaced or he's getting threatened, and he doesn't have a real strong way to always be the consistent or the leading DPS for these teams. 100 Thieves probably have to pair something with Quid there to make sure that Meech is not left trying to be the sole primary damage dealer for this squad. Meanwhile, for Dignitas, as they rounded out the Jin. Tons of utility from this bot lane between Tomo and Isles. Very strong pushing lane as well. And then more than likely this poppy will go to XU. You can use that to enable some strong dives if you want to punish that bot lane early, which has been a lot of the core strength from Tomo and Isles this early season. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think Poppy definitely flexible. Can go top lane as well. Has some pretty good matchups. You know, against Cassante, it would be kind of just a farm lane. So if XU sees an angle for a better pick later, uh, they could obviously flex that around. But Senna as well as the Vera. So very strong laning duos down in the bottom lane. It's four ADCs in the bot lane. It does make things pretty aggressive, pretty spicy. You know, generally when one team really gets ahead down there, it can be difficult to come back yeah um both both sides also with pretty decent engage you know from those adcs obviously there's asher on one side varus alt on the other um and i'm kind of going to be excited to see how these guys perform because there's some young players down on the, those bot lanes and i think the expectations are fairly high for guys like me for guys like tomo uh, Tomo and Isles were doing really, really well in Champions queue, so a lot of people were kind of talking about that. Meech obviously was doing very well in NACL, so there's some kind of expectations there. Um, but I think both these bot lanes have been relatively quiet. Most of the discussion has been around, you know, the soul laners, the junglers, I think, for both these squads. Yeah, uh, both Dove and Quid have been, honestly, pleasant surprises in the early season. Dove had an incredible couple of games, and obviously in their first win, when he played the Corky after XU gave him that bit of a head start against Mask. And then in the game, even though they lost it, there was that almost 1v9 moment on the Azir. He picked up the Quadra, the almost girl, seemingly yeah. bringing that game back from the brink of a loss. Whereas for Quid, also having some better performances as well. And I think that's important for 100 Thieves because Quid is the only returning member for this squad. Mm -hmm. And 100 Thieves, I think uh, Jungle Juice, was very adamant about, we believe in this guy. We just know that he came in a little late and the adjustment period takes a long time. I'm honestly glad that they are sticking with him and already starting to see the resemblance of some results paying off. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I talked to, to Golden Lou, I talked to all the coaches prior to the, the season actually starting. And one of the things he was talking about was he thinks Quid is a lot better than what he showed on stage last split, that a lot of it is to do with nerves, is yeah. to do with actually getting comfortable on stage, uh, that he's one of their best performers in scrims. He's someone that they're really confident, you know, can develop. So uh, I am glad as well that they are giving him that time. I think especially when you're going to be importing really young players that haven't played in, in tier one leagues, haven't played you know, a lot of time, you have to give them some development time. You have yeah. to give them some lead in time. You Definitely. can't just give them one split and they say, ah, you weren't the best. Let's get rid of him. I don't think it's really fair. Uh, it is going to be the Azir getting grabbed up here for Quid. And Corky has already been banned out, so not going to be there as an answer. Akali is something that is relatively popular these days as an answer into it. There's also some of the kind of counterpicks that we saw last year, things like Yone. Uh, you can obviously go some of the range counterpicks like Xerath and stuff like that. I think that stuff all works, but it's just not really that common in pro because most players aren't comfortable playing Ghost style of champions. So it wouldn't be at all surprised to see the college just get locked in. And depending on what Dignitas's last pickup is, River is still waiting to select his jungler of choice. Now, on the waiting room, we discussed a lot about things like our male's performance on the Lilia, really strong into melee compositions or backliners that don't really punish Lilia as hard. 
for Jin and Ash, it's hard to get consistent lockdown against someone like Lilia because all your CC Ooh, is skill shot reliant. Oh, and the flex poppy top comes into play. And now XU has a little bit of extra hard commit diving power. And that's really great with something like an Akali who is going to be committing with you in those dives. Yeah, absolutely. I think on the other side, you know, 100 Thieves, again, is very light on engaged. I will say this has been pretty common, I feel like, uh, of their drafts is that they have been really light on engaged in, in a lot of their games. So we'll see what the final pick is going to be, but it's going to be Trundle. Uh, so Trundle getting locked in here, you know, does set up for poke. Uh, I'm expecting it to be Lethality Varus. When you have that paired with the Azir, that does make some sense. Obviously, the Trundle can help to disengage, can help to set up for that poke as well with the pillar. Um, but that has been one of the struggles, I think, of 100 Thieves in a number of their games. You know, when I'm looking back at some of the drafts, uh, it's something that I do think they, at times, you know, had those difficulties with where they didn't have, you know, hard engage buttons. They didn't have that, those ways to always start the fights, you know, right when they would want. Um, but we'll see if this one is going to work out for them. I think, you know, if you're playing this from ahead, it's going to be fairly easy to, uh, to play out. But if you do fall behind, there's not a lot of opportunity to actually pick people off with 100 Thieves Draft. And on the other side, you have such easy go buttons with the Vi, with the Akali to follow that up, to try to dive into the back line, kill off some of these squishy members here. You know, a lot of easy targets there. If Dove can have a good game, he could really get rolling because Senna, Varus, Azir are all prime targets yeah. for this Akali. Pretty easy pickings for an assassin like Akali and probably the most reliant. And even though we did see some Storm Surge nerfs going into our current live patch, 14.2. Akali's still pretty oppressive to deal with once she gets ahead. And we've already seen how XU has been able to propel and set up Dub for success in the early mid game. It's gonna be on Quid and River to make sure that not only Quid is being extra safe, but also River is paying extra attention to the mid lane and seeing if he needs the cover for any ganks. So it's worth noting, Tomo, very defensive item buy here. So it is Boots 4-Pot, and he is starting uh, with the fleet as well. So he knows a lot of this lane is just going to be about dodging skill shots, dodging out you know, from those various Qs, the Es, uh, from those Qs from Minions Senna that are going to be shooting gone. through the minions. And you have to be able to survive in this setup and dig. Looking like they want to set up a late invade here over towards <laughs> the blue, or potentially even look to catch Meech, but... He's positioned well in the pixel, so he can just walk straight down. Not going to be in any trouble. Going to get out of there just fine. No level one invade shenanigans either. It looks like the furthest ward that Dignitas were able to place was just right around that uh, new blue buff wall. That's mm -hmm. how it circles it. It does give you vision of when the blue buff is started, but it doesn't give you vision if, let's say, River sneaks around through the bush and aggros it towards him as well. But he's on this red buff start. We're going to see if he wants to go for a full clear, if he wants to try anything for a level top lane, uh, like level three top lane clear. Otherwise, it could just be kind of matched opposite clears for both of these junglers. Yeah, it's getting kind of spicy down there already in the bottom lane. You can see heal on both sides has already been committed. The potion is going to start getting chugged up here as well. As Rich gets that fast level two, did look for the stun on the wall, couldn't quite find the distance there, which is just short, but... Yeah, this is, this is a tough lane, I think, for Tomo and Isles. You know, if, if it goes slow, you're gonna, just going to kind of get whittled down with the additional sustain, the additional poke that this Senna Varus have. You know, every Q from that Senna is going to be so health positive because it's not only chunking you down, it's healing them up. And you can see as a result, you know, Isles already falling down on that HP a little bit. So uh, we'll see if they can really make this work. Yeah, and a strong answer from Ayla in the draft, just being able to pick something that not only combats the push, but also gives you the sustain to match against it. River could find something here. He's in fog. Duff has already used his Twilight Trout, and that exposes the fact that he does not have Shuriken backflip, but looks like River's just snaking his way through towards the bottom lane instead. There's all this fog that Dignitas have no idea. Oh, they're dead. And yeah, this this is definitely at least a flash, if not a guaranteed kill. Oh, they're kill. backing up. They're backing up. They know. They, they, they felt something. The spider senses were tingling here. <laughs> Isles is going to face check and oh my god there's a troll and he's gonna have to flash away and now Isles is less happy about his current state of affairs yeah they do lose the flash but at the very least they don't die if they didn't actually back off right then they could have gone down uh, could have been an easy first blood but chat has voted uh, they want to watch top lane so i think we're gonna check in on top lane here a little bit okay. uh, and i don't know why because it's probably <laughs> they just want to see the wet sick. noodle fight 
All right, guys, now watch this. Rich is prepping that grass frog, and at one point, he'll walk up and auto attack. That is my extent of top lane knowledge whenever. Oh, look, he got the grass. Oh my god. Oh, Alpha's is it a genius. This is the top lane main. Yeah, I mean, th these kind of matchups, a lot of poppy matchups is is propping grass, but also playing around your passive, the buckler auto, right? So um, generally you'll see when that buckler auto is up, uh, Sniper is going to back off. He's going to try to not give you that free buckler and he's going to force you to use that auto attack on a minion. So you waste that range trade. Yeah, uh, it does additional damage. You can get that shield as well. Uh, and obviously you're getting that free grass proc. So Rich just constantly trading here. Poppy is one of these champions that, yeah, it's a tank, but people really do underestimate the damage if you haven't played a lot of top lane against it. Uh, there also are some really fun builds. I'm not expecting it, but Sundered Sky and stuff like this is actually quite popular uh, in solo queue on the Poppy. So uh, there's some pretty aggressive angles you can look for. XU though is pathing around. I don't think they're gonna go for the dive to be honest with you, but it uh, would be cool. There was an angle, but Rich pinged that Sniper backed up and more than likely put a ward down in this bush, which he did. So just pinging and waiting actually knows like, hey, if you're gonna go for anything, you can try to take Krugs, but just try to stay out of fog. Do not give 100 Thieves information that you're on the top side of the map and ensures safety for Tomo and Isles to not get immediately countered by River on the bottom side. Yeah, and you can see River still a little bit concerned about what might be going on up there. So he's heading up, trying to actually do those Krugs. Nice W from Rich, gonna be able to stun up Sniper. Uh, so he does dash in, but XU steals away both these camps and now could actually just cross back towards his Raptors if he wants. Uh, you can see that Isles is moving up to try to cover that. So it looks like he'll just be going down towards the Krug, but Dove is quite low, has the information that the Trundle is around. I have to say, the vision game from Dignitas has been quite good this uh, early few minutes so far. They have constantly been lighting up River's jungle whenever he is going to cross into the next section. So they had that early blue ward during the early parts of the game when he was getting ready to cross from red buff into the blue side of the map. And then as XU completed this invade, taking both Krugs and Rafters, he leaves a couple wards behind as well, making sure that they're always keeping tabs on River. Because one of the things about Trundle is when it comes to clear speed, he's not the fastest clearing jungle before you get that Tiamat as your first uh, subcomponent if he wants to rush a Titanic Hydra. So it's really hard for him if he's not getting anything done aside from just farming. He's really powerful in those skirmishes and those game setups. Well, I actually really like this choice here from River, like his top game's got taken. They didn't really have that much to do on the map right now. So he just goes straight over to Dragon and he's actually just gonna be able to take down the Dragon easy peasy. Good uh, knows that it would be a little bit of a risky move to actually go for the invade on the Raptors because he had been spotted on that move over. That was his initial play. That wasn't there. XU's covering the, the, the Krug top, so there's nothing he can really do besides go to that Dragon. And I think that's one of the things that always kind of impresses me about River is even when he's put in these awkward spots, he finds a way to make it work. That being said, XU's got to be really happy about his spot, has a much better buy, is up a couple camps already, and is going to have that XP lead. So we'll see if he can do anything with it. Yeah, and if not anything, he's just going to get to level six a little bit faster than River, which will give him a window where he can make something explode on the map just much quickly and, and River is not going to be able to have a strong answer for it. I'm surprised that they haven't really gone for Grubs quite yet. I thought that when River went for that Dragon that there was an opportunity. Both Dove and Rich had pushed on their solo lanes respectively, but it just seems like XU is content just taking the farm lead for now. Yeah, exactly. He's just really kind of focusing on that and I think neither side was super comfortable to be able to actually start up those Grubs because top lane, both people are pretty low on resources. Mid lane, both mid laners are really low as well. So if you start up the Grubs and you don't have that kind of guaranteed team fight win or that guaranteed push the other jungler shows up all of a sudden you're low from taking the grubs yeah. they can push you off maybe they get free grubs so uh just kind of trying to take these guaranteed wins here uh we'll be spotted out on that bot side doesn't know who's in the brush but knows meech is hanging around now as it's gonna be ayla just working on this scuttle trying to take it for himself but honestly x you should be able to move back up as his bot lane arrives and it's just gonna be ayla kind of ending up leashing that a little bit for him yeah, XU wasn't quite sure where the rest of 100 Thieves members were, so he didn't want to commit. But as soon as Meech and Ayla both realized oh, that really XU nervous. knew... Mm, this could be difficult. XU is level 6, so he has cease and desist if he wants to lock down anyone that comes in range. And as soon as Tomo and Isles move forward, Wade backs up immediately. Yeah, I mean, XU had no vision, so he's just playing it smart, right? Like, he, he really was worried about this potential, but Dove's gonna get scooped in. Dove is forced to flash over the Emperor's wall. Wade is just walking away. XU does not commit Cease and Desist because he knows that River is here. He's forced to flash away. Cease and Desist right on back, but he is just gone. First Blood goes over to Quid, and River's looking for more, but a Shuriken backflip will keep Dove alive. Yeah, they're gonna be able to uh, get their mid laner out, but at the end of the day, it's XU going down. 
not really respecting River's damage whatsoever. He was so late to react in that play. River just straight up walks up, pops the ult and is just smacking him down. And like Kenzie, the summoner spell is not updating, but both XU and Dove did use their flash. River used his flash as well. So yeah. those summoners are down. Uh, we'll get that fixed up for you as soon as we can. But here it is one more time. Quit, nice scoop, puts him back in the tower. So Dove has to flash out immediately. And XU just thinks, oh, okay, I'll just escort the wave in. I'll just walk it out. That's a lethal tempo trundle here with his ulti on you and a red buff. You cannot disrespect that guy. You have got to pay that respect over. Does not flash out until way too late. Ends up having to use the ulti anyway. And he knows that is a pretty big mistake. You know, that is his lead completely gone. And now that's a freebie first blood given over to the Azir, which is not what you want to see. Decent amount of damage, oh. Sonic Shadow, not going to be enough to take out Isle. Still has heal available if he needed it, but it's enough damage to force him off the turret. And that's going to give Meech and Ayla a little bit more freedom in this push. Yep, and they have this really powerful bot lane 2v2. You land that Varus ulti. They're targeting Isles because Tomo has cleanse, right? So you're just going to go for the support. You're going to go for the Ash. If you guarantee that one ulti hits, everything else is going to hit after. You're going to hit the Q from the Varus. You're going to hit the Q from the Senna. You're going to hit the W from the Senna. You're going to hit the ulti. It all just kind of works in conjunction like that. So not quite having the damage 100 to 0 Isles there, but nearly getting it. They do get a play. They do have a CS advantage as well. You know, just about two full waves there as it is 11 CS. So going to be feeling really good about their spot. And again, red buff over on Quid, first blood over on Quid. Uh, he's been gifted a pretty nice spot. Thanks to that disrespect from Axio and a good play from River. Yeah, I mean, we talked about the, the beginning of the game that if 100 Thieves find themselves in the lead or just kind of scaling along fine, then, you know, this Azir gets the power on up, the Varus gets to hit his items, and then you have decent front line set up. How do we feel about 100 Thieves' current position in this game? I mean, I think they're, they're looking really good, right? I, I think overall, uh, they have Pryo and Bot, and Dove's gonna die again mid. Uh, he doesn't have perfect execution or flash available to get out alive. It's another kill that goes over to 100 Thieves. Yeah, that is really, really good. They have that early dragon. They got a plate Bot. They're getting a plate mid. They have first blood on their Zier, another assist. Quid two for two on hitting those ultis on Dove. So first one forced the flash, this one gets the kill. It's very nicely done. River just trying to escort this scuttle up away. And you can see things looking pretty solid here, 400 Thieves. I think as long as they're the first ones to the objectives, they're the ones setting up and Dick has to fight into them. I think Dick is really gonna struggle. You know, 100 Thieves doesn't really have a lot of hard engage. Fair assault, sure, but like, this, I'm not really gonna call it hard engage Ooh. as uh, Flash is going to be forced there. Yeah, the bear ulti forces oh. Isles to flash, and the Ash <laughs> arrow goes wide. That's what feels bad, man. It definitely is. Isles, you know, is trying to hit Ayla. Again, he can't aim for Meech. Meech would have been the easier target, but Meech has cleanse, so it's not going to get that much done there. Unless you have a lot of CDR, and you're just going to go for the kind of rinse and repeat, try to force cleanse, then kill later. But because XU was there, if you hit Senna, you can probably 100-0 Senna there. So I uh, did look for Ayla, but Ayla... You know, just pops the mist, pops that E, gets the additional move speed from that. And he has Swifty Boots, by the way, so it's actually pretty difficult uh, to be able to lock him down if he sees it coming. So a nice, easy sidestep from him. And now they're going to be starting up the Dragon. Will be spotted, and Dove is on the move over here. Both top laners have TP available, so we'll see if they're going to look to use it. Because Rich is basing. I think Rich might TP, and they make a test. Yeah, if Dick and Toss commit a lot of members to this, this could be a flip that decides the fate of the game. They go all in onto River. He secures the Dragon, and he's already popped the Subject Gate. Exu goes down before River is popped. Curtain Call is going to be opened up by Tomo, looking for more damage. Dove has already popped Ayla in the back line. Sniper goes all out, isolates Dove, and takes him out. He's going to pop the Blast Code back in, looking for Owls. He knows he doesn't have Flash. Commits his own, looks for the damage, but Rich saves his backliner before the arrow from Meech takes him out, and Rich is forced to flee. Oh, very close fight there, back and forth. Quit thinking about it, maybe wanting a little bit more. It's a bit of a bloodbath there. Three members on either side going down, but at the end of the day, it's River who secures the dragon. Some more things looking good here. 400 Thieves. I can see that fight one more time. I think the, the start was quite good for Dig because Rich was much faster on the TP. He had the push in top lane. That meant he had first base. He gets that TP down towards this fight. Very clearly, Dignitas wanted to look for the scrap. You can see Dove coming around from that top side, looking to flank in the back line, putting pressure on them. So he goes in onto Quid and Ayla, putting pressure on them, while the rest of his team is actually you know, just bursting down that trundle in that front line. But we're back to live, and we're back to a dead Quid, who I have to think got hit by an Ash ulti based on the cooldowns. Yeah. 
I mean, at the top of the show, we said that this was going to be an all-out brawl between Dignitas and 100 Thieves, who are currently both 1 and 2 in the standings. And between both of these teams, they are not afraid to be throwing hands so far in these 13 minutes as the Verisulti is going to connect on the aisles. Still doesn't have Flash, and that's an easy jump for River to take him out. But the Q Flash from XU finds Beats, gets a huge shutdown. Duff looking for the Shuriken back left. It's Tomo that takes out Ayla. Oh my god. There's just so many squishy targets on either side. If any CC lands, you're just instantly dead, it feels like. Rich now, potentially in a little bit of trouble here. Gonna try to push River off that ward, but... I don't know if he wanted to fight. Yeah. He's gonna back off. Yeah, River's ulti was just about to come up, and I'm thinking to myself, Rich, you want to get out ASAP, brother. Yeah, there's Titanic already done on the other side, so we're gonna see the mid lane kill now. It should just be Ash Arrow, is, is my assumption, based on the cooldowns. Yeah, Quid, a little bit of the anti-timing there. This time, Dove was equal to the task really fast on the E with the Shuriken flip. He dodges out on the Azure ulti there. That was Quid looking for a play, trying to scoop him into River, but we're back to top lane, and Rich on the run here from the Trundle ulti. Subjugate has been popped, and Rich is no longer as tanky as he used to be. XU's here for the cleanup, and Rich is buying enough time as he slams River to the wall, and Isles has shown up to the party for an easy three on one. Nicely done. Even with the center ulti cross map, it is not enough. Rich bought so much time. Has that early Frozen Heart he completed, has the bombies, has the tap. He's really tanky. He's able to buy enough time, even with that Trundle ulti there, that Ectu shows up, Isles shows up, he makes the first rotation, and that made all the difference as no one goes down there for a dig. And 100 Thieves lose too, but Quid at the very least will be able to push this tower. We'll see if he can finish it off. If he wants to risk it, we know that he can finish it off, but uh, he doesn't necessarily know exactly where everyone is on the map. Yeah, XC without cease and desist is not gonna bother wasting his time trying to catch up Quid on the retreat. He figures that he should just be able to get out just fine. Rich, however, he has to wait out the W. Something. Yeah, this is a little bit awkward. That's why he's not dashing away because he knows that Rich can just W when he does. Game of chicken. So he will be able to walk it out. We're just waiting out the slows from the Q. He's able to make himself out. Now, Dignitas, it is 15 minutes into the game now. Third dragon is about to spawn in the next minute and a half. It is Cloud Soul. So it's maybe not the most endearing one for 100 Thieves that they could have rolled, but it's still two dragons before the next soul condition. I imagine that'll be something that 100 Thieves want to scrap over, at least put a lot of pressure on Dignitas for. Yeah. The question is, what do Dignitas need to really do getting ready for this next fight? Oh, Dignitas looking for an engage. I think they're just going to keep looking for Fix. And that is how their comp really excels. Fish with Ash Arrows, look for the follow-up with Vi, you know, hover your soul laners when they're pushing out these side lanes. Continue looking for picks, continue looking for these scrappy plays. You know, 100 Thieves wants to function really as this five-man unit. I think it can work for Dignitas if they do that, but it's much more difficult to pull off. They really are going to excel in 1v1s and 2v2s and these little skirmishes where they can get the jump on people and burst them down. The fact that you already called out Meech's cleanse is now gone. Flash is still not available for Meech either, so any of the other hard CC abilities from Dignitas' side, if Meech is caught out unaware, he's got no escape tools to bail him out on the next one. And you can see X2 is sitting on the Herald. He has that available, so likely going to use this to try to set up for this next dragon here. They really don't want Hunter Thieves to get a quick third dragon. Rich going to TP in very early on to try to maintain presence, maintain pressure in this mid lane, help them to push this up. As he's working in towards his second item, the Herald will get dropped. We'll see if they want to drive it in. Xu is going to do Let's so. Go. So he will spawn the Void Mites. Uh, and it's going to mean a little bit of extra damage comes out from those Void Mites. Decent amount of damage, even with uh, the proc from the runes as well. Xu commits. He's into this on the river. He's locked down. The Subjugate does not keep him alive for long enough. Dub has to bail out with his own perfect execution. But now it's the firing on back from Quid and the rest of the backline, 100 Thieves. Can they look for more? Quid dashes in, gets the flash out of Rich, as well as Tomo, and Dignitas are gonna back off. It's a losing fight there, 400 Thieves, but so much damage done by Quid. He played that one really well. Got a two-man shuffle on the side, chunked down some members, then dashes in, forces out another flash. So even though the kill went the way of Dignitas, it's 100 Thieves that I think potentially could still <laughs> maintain control here. And more summoners gonna be forced there as well. So 100 Thieves, I think, can buy time for River. And I think it might end up being 100 Thieves Dragon. Whoa! Xu's going in. Two flash from Xu. He finds his moment, but it's not enough damage by himself on the meat. So he's forced to bail. Tomo tries to follow up, but he can't step up because Quid and Alar are zoning him off. And the soldiers will take out Tomo. Man, Quid is having a great game. Xu tries to come up big here with the Sundered Sky. Knows he has a lot of burst. Does go in for it, but couldn't get the kill. 
And now, Quid heading up towards top lane. Gonna push that out. We'll have TP pretty soon. River's back on the map. So I think we're gonna kind of just be in this rinse and, and repeat type scenario where both teams are gonna be setting up for the Dragon once again. Jinktoss trying to prevent it, but I think 100 Thieves has the better position to go for it. XU shows top, and I think this is just gonna be them starting this up. And with Quid having his TP now, it should just be 100 Thieves Dragon. Can't help but feel that was maybe a little little over eager from Dignitas' side trying to punish the back line of 100 Thieves. I, I'm always ready to praise when they are able to make the play out, so I'll hold the, the criticism, but it definitely feels that Dignitas are reaching the point of desperation in some of these mid-game moments. Yeah, it's tough, right? And I think that's it's partially just the nature of their composition, right? When you're looking over at the comp, when you have Jin, Akali, by you can't fight front to back you can't just be hitting the Sante and expect to win you have to get in on the back line so that does predicate you taking these more risky fights as uh, the ash arrow is going to sail between ayla and quid and that sure can flip the did connect and amount to nothing as dove obviously can't take it in without that cc landing yeah um but you know at the end of the day dove's still in a pretty good spot he has two items completed uh we do have you know pretty strong spot as well for xu so, Dignitas definitely are not out of it just yet, but the Dragons are absolutely a problem. You know, even though the Cloud Soul proc is pretty terrible for most of the members on the 100 Thieves side, it's really good for Trundle, and then the rest of them still are getting that flat move speed, which is just powerful for every champion in the game. Right. And it might be confusing for viewers at home if, like, if we're talking about, oh, Dignitas don't seem like they have a grasp on this when they technically have a gold lead, but it's not a commanding gold lead. And especially with 100 Thieves composition, this team gets harder to break the later the game goes on as the Azir continues scaling yeah. on up. The forms of disengage that they have, it just gets almost impenetrable from the side of Dignitas. Yeah, I mean, I, I think there's always going to be chances for Dig. You know, if you get that perfect flank, if you get that perfect angle, you absolutely can, you know, 100 to 0 some of these squishy members on the 100 Thieves side. Um, but the 1k gold lead meaning a lot less than the three dragons and Azir, Trundle, you know, some of these champions are so powerful in the later stages of the game. You know, Trundle really removing a lot of the tankiness uh, of these members over on the other side and, and also just going to make himself so much more tanky. And I think that's yeah. always one of the things that people really underrate. They talk so much about, oh yeah, Trundle really shreds the other enemy tanks, but it also makes himself very tanky when you're ulting this poppy. Uh, kind of turns yourself into that bit of a super tank. And you have some pretty respectable damage as well with the Titanic Rush, so yeah, we'll see. Uh, Dig, though, does have a lot of go buttons. Haven't been able to find too many good Ash arrows, unfortunately, but it only takes one sometimes. You, know, you get that perfect arrow onto someone like Ayla or Quid, you get the 100 0 play, and then all of a sudden, nothing else really matters as far as the position in the game. Definitely like this pickup from XU in the second item. He is basically committing to. Once I go in, I'm not going out, so I need to soak up as much damage as possible. The Stairs Gauge, uh, once it's proc, it's going to give them that little extra bit of shield. And then just a little bit of damage on top of it as well. It helps him and Dove try and make sure that the lethal point of trying to hit either it's Meech or Ayla or Quid in the mouth actually connects, and it makes the rest of the fight for Dignitas a little bit easier to do. River might be caught out here. Dove connects with the Shuriken backflip, perfect execution, immediate forcing of the Subjugate, and that's a trade of ultis between these two players. Yeah, a trade of ultis back and forth. They realize that the rest of the Hunter Thieves squad is around him, so they aren't going to be able to find anything more there. Isles obviously took another swing with his ulti through mid lane, wasn't able to find anyone. Uh, just relatively low cooldown, though, Quid. but they have to be a bit careful as it's the TP. He sees the flank, he sees the angle for the Sharima shuffle. Immediate cease and desist, tries to break up the fight. It gives Tomo enough space to be able to disengage. Isles goes down, but they trade on to Quid. Rich is TP'd as well. He actually just walked from the other sideline, but Dove finds Beach and assassinates him in the back line. Picks up a double onto Ayla. River's in trouble as well, but he's bought enough space. But the rest of Dignitas now have an opportunity to look for this Baron. Yeah, we'll see if they're going to actually feel confident to start it up. Their damage is very low. I don't, I don't know how fast they're going to be able to do it. Sniper would have TP if they do start it up. I don't think they can actually go for it. Uh, with just a Jin uh, and a low HP Akali, I don't think you can actually make it happen. But some great plays from Dignitas. They're absorbing the engage. And we're, I'm sure we're going to see this replay, but really impressive stuff from XU. The ulti from XU delayed Quid on the shuffle so much, and that really shut down this play. So here comes the ulti immediately in, then the flash on the flash ulti from Tomo reacting to it. Those plays right there is really what turns around this fight because it means not only does Tomo live, but Quid dies very, very quickly. Then on the other side, Dove is just creating chaos. He's in the back line on these squishy targets. If he gets on the Varus, if he gets on the Senna, it's going to be problematic for them. 
Really great stuff from XU, really great stuff from Tomo there. Showing off their mechanics, showing off their reaction times. Uh, they're able to answer that flank from Quid, who I think has been having a really strong game. But it's 30 seconds now until Soul. Another, Another arrow. arrow. Meech is forced to flash. Oh, XU is right on the sniper, but Dove has found Meech. Rich can also zone the rest of the members away. Keeper's verdict punts the front line, but Isle still goes down to Ayla, who is now trying to hunt off Rich. Rich gets rooted up. River and Sniper are back into this fight, and the rest of Dindatals have to trail away before River finds a pillar to make sure that they can get kept in line. And the rest of 100 Thieves are able to bully Dignitas off. Yeah, 100 Thieves just saying, nope, stop the chase, just go over towards the dragon. That's what we really need to play for here. XU and Isles going down for just Meech. Yes, Dub does get that kill on the Varus, but it's not gonna amount to much. With no jungler, no real way to be able to contest this, it should be a pretty easy soul grab. 400 Thieves been slowly working towards this end as a win condition. And now they have it, 24 minutes in. With the extra movement speed, some of these champions like Trundle becomes so terrifying because as soon as he pops the Subjugate, not only he's sapping your stats and your HP, now he gets a flat movement speed boost on top of it. So he gets to run down almost any target that he chooses in these next few fights. Dignitas are starting to run out of options. They, they have found opportunistic moments where either 100 Thieves have given them an angle or Dignitas just, you know, confidently take a moment it's like we just have to flip it at this point but i don't know how many more of those that are going to get in this game yeah and it gets even harder right because you're not absolutely perfect on the engage you don't instantly kill them off everyone has 20 percent move speed so the kite out the chase down going to be that much more difficult uh, to actually deal with you know even disregarding the 50 percent move speed that you get when you pop your ulti so uh, it is going to be really tough for dignitas from here but they do have playmaking, they have to continue looking, you have to continue fishing with these Ash Arrows, looking for these buy engages, because it's really the only way you can come back. If you play slow from here, you're gonna lose the Baron, you're gonna lose these objectives, you're gonna get choked out of the game. So all they can do is continue looking for plays, continue looking for picks. They have some of these X-Factor champions, right? You nail that Ash Arrow, you pop your ult out a couple people away, and all of a sudden, you know, you have that first pick, you reset the fight, maybe you can make something happen from there. It's so harder to execute comp on the side of Dignitas. It's the gamble they took going into this game. And now 25 minutes in, a Cloud Soul on the side of 100 Thieves. Gold lead still somewhat even while slightly ahead in favor of Dignitas. But 100 Thieves still definitely feel like the stronger composition when it comes to these front to back fights. Yeah, absolutely. And, and I mean, the, the reality is uh, the soul is usually worth around 4,000, 5,000 gold worth of stats. So yeah. you know, the gold lead does kind of lie to you at this point because yes, they do have that slight gold lead, 600 gold uh, on the scoreboard showing in the favor of Dignitas, but four dragons plus the soul stats clearly going to be putting uh, the combat power in 100 Thieves favor. Uh, plus, you have to take in consideration some of the scaling. You know, the Azir definitely getting really strong at this point, you know, working towards uh, that, that spell penetration now to try to deal with Kane and Rooker and some of these items with Dignitas looking for a pick on Ayla. Season assist first, then the Ash Arrow. It guarantees the CC combination to Ayla, but Sniper blocks a couple of the curtain call shots, but he can't block all of them. Tomo finally finds the last one on Ayla as he's got one more in the tank. He's going to fire it as no one else was in range. Clean pick for Dignitas but nothing much more they can transition off of it. Yeah, it's a decent pick, but at the end of the day, again, I actually think, as funny as it sounds, 100 Thieves are almost in a, in a better spot because of it. Like, you can't actually win the 5v4 because you spent so much to get those kills. So it's gonna be 100 Thieves that move into the river, that get the vision around the Baron. You're spending so much to kill off the support. You're spending Ash Arrow, you're spending Vi ult and Flash, you're spending the Jin flat uh, the ult, the, you know, the Akali ult, all of these tools means 100 Thieves are the ones that are still out on the map, and now it's Rich that potentially is in trouble. Rich gets punted towards the rest of 100 Thieves, but he punts River out of the fight. A teleport Dumb from Dove. And he's looking for maybe a little bit of damage, but he doesn't have perfect execution, so it's not much lethality or burst from his side to see if he can find any of the backliners from 100 Thieves. Ayla has respawned and is back for the Baron, and we're once again Azale at a standstill. Yep, a bit of a standstill here. 100 Thieves again just continuing to scale, continuing to play towards these objectives. Quid pushing out that side lane. They wanted to look for the pick for Rich. They get the TP as the response from Dove. So at the very least, they force him to use that. It's gonna make it much harder for him to play in those side lanes, you know, where he wants to be splitting things up, looking for those skirmishes. And 100 Thieves just maintain control of the map, push out mid, and they're again gonna be likely moving back up. 
uh, you know, to try to get vision around that Baron eventually. Um, we're going to have Elder here in a minute yep. as well. So they can just continue to play through these objectives. That's all they really need to do. And that's kind of my big flag right now that could be the end of this game. This Elder Dragon is just spawning in under a minute. 100 Thieves have been insanely successful on securing them, setting up vision and getting posture first before Dignitas. So I wonder if Dignitas are just going to have to force a fight before the Elder even spawns because you don't want to take the chance of going for the 50-50 instead. You want to create a numbers advantage and find a way to make sure the 100 Thieves just don't have a clean way into the entrance. Yeah, absolutely. I think in the ideal world, they find that pick, then they go to the dragon, they take it, you know, uncontested, but it's going to be really tough because 100 Thieves don't really have to risk anything prior to it spawning, right? They're going to be looking to play very heavily for this, you know, be grouped up as five, making sure that they're kind of checking all these boxes. And a lot of these third items are starting to come through. Third item already there for Meats, the Crypt Bloom now done for Quid as he's going to be working towards likely a death cap. Uh, Crypt Bloom kind of an interesting item, you know, it feels like has almost entirely replaced Void Staff at this point. Uh, it does have a little bit less magic penetration, a little bit less AP, but it has the ability haste, it's cheaper, and it has uh, the heal proc, which can be decent. Uh, but it's not really about that heal proc, it's just, you know, really the other stats are quite valuable. Yeah, just a little more efficient and a little earlier to purchase. Dignitas are the first ones in this river. Elder, Dub? I believe, is already Dub. available. All eyes are going to be on Dove and XU to see if they can get the assassination successful because the rest of this fight would be so disastrous for them if they just had to play front to back. Sniper and River are just posturing forward and forward. XU goes in, sees and assist right on a quit. Dove lands the shuriken backflip, waits for him to move before he commits. Tomo finds the curtain call on a quit. That's one against one. XU already fell to meet the rest of 100 Thieves trying to find Dove. He gets rooted up. The flash does not save him and the rest of 100 Thieves don't even need quit because they've got the rest of the back line doing all the damage. As Rich and Isles are forced to split, and the rest of 100 Thieves have routed Dignitas. 100 Thieves crushing through that fight. It was good coordination on the flank by Dig to be able to kill off Quid. But again, they have to spend so much to get that one kill. You know, it has to be Exu going down, Dove going down, Tomo even had to find that sniper shot to get that kill. And the rest of the 100 Thieves squad are tearing through you all the while. 100 Thieves now posturing to try to end the game right here, right now. It's up to Isles and Rich. Seven seconds on Exu, 16 on both Dove and Tomo. Two-man defense from Rich, Rich and Isles. Wave. Rich kills the wave as you call it out. They get one Nexus turn, and the rest of 100 Thieves are backing up. A teleport is coming in from Quid, but Sniper is really low on HP. Rich moves forward, tries to see if he can get into pick here. But 100 Thieves are going to make a clean getaway. No one goes down, and they this might is... have time to look for Elder. This is really awkward, though, because no, I think they actually have to reset with them being that low. So I think it's actually Dig who can go for Elder. So this is potentially a little bit of a mistake here for 100 Thieves. You know, they made the read that they can end the game. They couldn't actually end the game. And now Dig has a chance to try to rush down this Elder. I think they need to be going right for it. This is maybe one of the only ways you can have a chance of coming back into this game, because if you could secure this, you could win a fight. But they're very slow to start it up. They're not actually on it still. And I think the 100 Thieves is probably going to get here to contest. We'll see if they can. If they get this, this is their window to win the game. This is going to be close. 100 Thieves are now finally all here. They're entering through that mid line brush as well. Dub is waiting in the wings once again, Isles. but he has no flash. Sniper routes off Rich as well. Isles is completely cut off the fight. Arrow goes in. Dub is trying to find the perfect execution as well. Quid goes down. Tomo's firing off all the curtain call bullets as well. Looking for one more. They find Rich. This could be big for Dignitas. Dub is in the back line. Does a decent amount of damage. It's all the sniper to protect the rest of this back line. All the rookies have to make sure that they can stay alive here for 100 Thieves. But Rich is still leading the charge. Sniper's too low to hold the line. And Dignitas are bullying 100 Thieves out of the pit. But neither of them seem to be able to take the Elder. But look at mid lane. This is so tough, right? Because Dignitas, you know, kind of wins the fight based on HP. But they have to go back and defend their base. There are so many super stacking up. And there's only the one Nexus Tower. This is going to be very, very difficult for them to really be able to get anything done here. So they just have to base. They have to reset. They have to try to do it once again. Dignitas kind of pulling off a bit of a miracle in that fight. It's the slimmest of margins that allow some of these 100 Thieves members to limp away. You know, Meech almost gets done to one against the wall at one point. It looked like Ayla almost done against the wall at one point as well. Had they gone down, it could have been a completely different story, but now it is 100 Thieves back out on the map, starting up this Elder. It's Zingtos trying to race out here, trying to find some way to stop this. Dove does have his TP. He's up now, but is there even a good ward? There is one deep ward above where Rich is that he could actually look to TP to. But it's not the best flank angle because 100 Thieves are kind of kiting this down. 
So Isles is trying to get around, trying to look for an ulti angle here. We'll see if the Ash Arrow can find any key targets. Yeah, that Pink Ward is going to spot Dove as soon as he rounds the corner of that blue buff. 100 Thieves has set up a fortress right now in that tri bush, but the Elder is going down. 6,000 HP. Ash Arrow lands on the river. He's forced to retreat. Sniper is getting taken low as well. They turn their fire. Sniper is forced to retreat. 3,000 HP. River, does he look for the steal? He's going to go in. 2,000 HP. It's a flip. Oh. It's a flip. And she lands it. The Elder buff is now there for Dinatons. They look for the execute, but not the power of Elder is enough for them as 100 Thieves are still winning out the fight. Rich is forced to TP. Does he have pillar to interrupt it? No. He gets back in time. But Quinn is still on the chase looking for Dove and Isles. And Isles has got nowhere to run. It's a sacrificial land for Dinatons as Dove is able to make his retreat. 100 Thieves, do they just rush to try and end the game right here, SL? I don't know. I mean, I definitely think they, they could try to go for it. It looks like they're pinging towards Parent, but there's long death timers. I think they maybe could have gone towards mid. I think they're a little bit gun shy because of what happened last time and the fact that that one wave was getting cleared out so they would have had to wait for the next wave. Potentially could have tried to go for it, but this is definitely the safer of the calls. Either way, it is Dig taking that Elder, but almost all the Elder buffs are already gone because pretty much everyone died with it. It's just Dove and Rich that do still have that available. And Dig, I'm really impressed with how they're actually being able to play out some of these fights, making it a lot closer than I would have expected, being able to find some good angles. And 100 Thieves kind of letting them bully them out of the river a little bit. I uh, was pretty surprised by that, you know, especially with... I was not really able to find any good targets with his alt. It's like, it's so hard for him to actually find any sort of a target because you have two Edge of Knights, you have the Cleanse, you have Merc Treads, and then two tanks in the front line. Like, basically, it has to be the Azir. That's it. Yeah. It's definitely surprising that Dignitas somehow fought off this fortress comp that we've set up from the beginning of this game to be you know such an impenetrable thing the later the game goes on but in that one moment it seemed like the front line was taking a lot of damage and soaking up but there was no real damage being done by the back line of 100 thieves it didn't feel like yeah. they felt safe to walk up i mean i felt like once they walked back into that tri brush down towards bot lane then you can't really walk back in um because you've kind of already seeded position but, you know, what I would question is, did they have to actually retreat that far back in that case? You know, clearly they're very worried about the flank. They're trying to make sure that Dove isn't coming from behind, that XU isn't coming from behind. But that meant that they all retreated so far back that they couldn't actually enter back into the fight. River did get a chance at a 50-50, but it was obviously a very awkward approach to that dragon. And I'm not even sure if he was in smite range when it did go down or not. Uh, but he did run up and obviously try. 100 Thieves, though, on the marsh here. They have the Baron buff. Not great wave spear over on the dig toss side. And they're going to be TPing in, trying to see if they can force any sort of a play. Cypher's the first one in. There's still a couple of Elder buffs available on Dove. Look at Rich. He's kind of getting pounded. Rich is getting chunked as well. He's forced to flash the Tonic Shadow. It's enough. The Subjugate is what finished him off. And now five on four. Dignitas trying to hold strong against the rest of 100 Thieves. They easily crush this inhibitor and they've got two empowered cannon minions xu goes in looks for quid but he's got the stasis from zonius keeps him alive ash arrow into the current call it's a not enough damage don't look for the perfect execution but perfect timing from quid on the emperor's divide keeps dove out of the fight and takes him out hundred thieves might just be able to finish this game it looks like they're gonna do it quit with a beautiful ulti they're rejecting that perfect execution tomo's gonna go down it's only isles remaining and he will not be enough 100 Thieves closing this one out. Moving to 2-2 two and two after two weeks. It got a little bit tense. Yeah, it got a little I, bit tense. I was about to say, the relief for me. <laughs> man just looked like he just got back from the war. It's like, oh my god, that was that was brutal. Oh, man. He was in the trenches against Signatas. You know, I do think 100 Thieves probably thought that was going to be a, a kind of clean, easy one at a certain point. You know, once they got the soul, they were looking totally in control. But Dignitas doing a good job finding some engages, really pressuring them heavily, utilizing the playmaking that they had to make it tough for 100 Thieves. But at the end of the day, 100 Thieves equal to the task. They get their second win here. And they're kind of handling business, I think, a lot better than people did expect coming into the season. Yeah. People largely had them, myself included, fairly low in the power rankings. Yes, they are two and two, but their only losses are to Energy and C9, you know, two of the top projected teams on the table. Yeah, Golden Glue mentioned it. We only lost to the, the top team so far, but that will be the end of the Dignitas 100 Thieves match. But for, before we get further into the day, LCS fans, Fantasy LCS is happening on Sleeper. It's not too late to sign up and start a league with your friends, then crush their dreams with your own LCS super team. So you can go ahead and head on over to sleeper.com or sleeper.app to give it a try. 
going to be headed to break before Shopify Rebellion takes on Cloud9. But first, Raz actually put Blabber on the hot seat in this split's first MasterCard Player of the Week interview. What's up, Blabber? Congratulations on your week one MasterCard Player of the Week. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you. Do you know how many Player of the Weeks that you've gotten? Eight. This is actually your fifth one. Fifth? <laughs> yes. No, no, no. It's no crazy. Way. No way. You don't I believe it? I have way more than five. All I'm saying is you have a lot of competition. I have here way more than five. That, at least from what I've counted. I'm okay if I make mistakes. <laughs> but yes, you are a four times LCS champion, uh, two times MVP, seven time All Pro. Uh, congratulations on this. Now, you've had a longer sit down interview with Jat in the JLXP podcast. So I want to do it a little bit differently here. You're going to be on the hot seat. Uh, idea is you have 90 seconds, rapid fire questions. Are you ready? I'm, I'm ready, yes. Perfect, let's get started. First things first, uh, seventh year with C9. If it couldn't be with them, who would you be with? Uh, I guess I would have been with TSM if I wasn't with C9. Yeah. Uh, I think I was interested in joining them in 2017 or 18, my first year. Uh, but I went to C9 instead. But like, you said you were a fan of CLG earlier. Would you want to, if you had the chance with oh, any team? Go to team? CLG? Yeah. Yeah, I, I probably would have played with CLG. I, honestly, I would have played with any team. Okay. I would have <laughs> yeah. played with any team. Like, any team that wanted me, I was like, sure. I'll okay, like, <laughs> let's be a little faster on this one then. Which pro are you look up to coming in? Before I was a pro? Yeah. Uh, double. Okay. Biggest, biggest scrim inter right now? Jojo. Not you? No. <laughs> okay, just making sure. Most annoying teammate? Jojo. <laughs> biggest diva? Jojo. Okay, what's your big diva moment? If you had one in your career? In my career? Yes. Hmm. You can skip this one if you can't think it. I, I don't know. I probably had a lot. Biggest irrational fear? You have 30 seconds. Irrational fear? Yeah. Uh, I don't know if it's not rational, but I don't like spiders. There it is. Uh, most likely to lose to as a team? Most likely to lose to? Yeah. Like in the LCS? Yeah. Flyer TL? Energy Championship. Fluke? Of course. <laughs> uh, favorite chance to play? Um, 10 seconds Rexat. left. Champ you int the most on? Even in solo queue. Four seconds brand, left. Brand, brand. Brand? Yeah. All right, two seconds left and that's it. Congratulations on that one. You passed up with flying colors. Thank you. And look at this pose. What, were you, what was your thought process when you struck this pose? I didn't have a thought process in 2021 Worlds. Yeah. Uh, I had to do it for our quarterfinal Caesar. Yeah. With, um, when we were playing at Gen G and Riot told me to do it. Yeah. And then <laughs> I did it. And yeah. then they've been like reusing it uh, in some of their like international uh, like trailers or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, so then when I was doing my player of the week, they were like, you want to do this pose? And I was like, sure. Sounds good to me. Pick it up. Revel in it. Congratulations on your week one player of the week. You're hopefully going to get a lot more. Thank you, Blabber. Thank you very much, Russ. Look what I just made. The perfect pearl. Not too bad, but check this out. <laughs> Whoa, a true Venus clam. Red Bull gives you wings. The new Red Bull Sea Blue Edition with the taste of Juneberry. Wings for every taste. back to the LCS arena. I am here with the victorious Ayla after, I mean, kind of a banger. Uh, you came, there's a lot of, you know, coming down from that game. I guess, take me through it. What do you think uh, your strengths and weaknesses were of your team during that game? Yeah, so I think our team comp, if we got through the early laning phase, like we had really good champions to deal with, they engage. Because like they, they clearly had an engaged comp, they wanted to dive into us, but we had the right tools, like we had Trundle to like ult Poppy or Vi when he's ulting in. Azir can ult them away and like Varicenna have very long range. So that was our mindset going into the game and early game went really well. And then we went to mid game and it was like really back and forth. I think we just, we still need to work on that, like being clean at the game, but they were getting like pretty good engage angles or like we weren't respecting at the right times. So it's very chaotic, but we got the win. Congratulations. Uh, I think one thing that's really interesting about this team is that you all are, are so young, which kind of makes, I think, you and River the, mo the two most experienced 
players on this team in terms of tenure. Um, how has communication been and in bringing this roster together with both Meech and Sniper coming in? Yeah, so we knew that going into the split, Sniper and Meech would be like very new to the scene and like rookies generally need a lot of assistance. So that's been one of our main goals is like helping them. So I think the coaches and like Meech Jungle help Sniper a lot. And then it's like me and the coaches help with Meech as well. And that's kind of been a whole process for like the past two months. We've just been like trying really hard to teach them and like bring them up to speed. And I think we still have a lot to work on, but they've been showing so much promise. Like their innate talent is so good that even though they don't know much, like I can see like how, how good we can be like going forward. Okay. And then lastly, uh, what are your goals for the split? My goals, I mean, it's my second year playing LCS, but I knew going into this year, I would have to be more of a veteran, like educating type of position. So I think my goal was com coming into the split is like, I want to be a really strong duo with Meech. Like I've been trying to work with him very closely and like work on our laning phase, like work on teaching him how to be a strong player and like encouraging him to be like, just be very vocal and like shine. Mm -hmm. So that's been a very big focus of mine. And yeah, I'm just working on it every day. Awesome. Thank you so much for taking the time. Shopify and Shopify Rebellion and C9 are on the other side of this.